Hey guys, I just finished making the Q&A video, uh, answering all your questions. And I want to start out by just saying thank you. And could you please do me a favor and click the subscribe button so you can stay tuned to all the videos here on this channel. All right, that's all. Let's get on to the video. All right, guys, it's time for Q&A. Questions and answers you asked, I'm going to answer. Uh, so we, we had uh, quite a lot of questions come in and that's great thank you for asking i won't be able to answer all of them probably uh, or maybe i will but i'll try and do it fairly rapid fire kind of style and not spend too much time on each question um, some of the questions i might even use for uh, material for a full video we'll see about that so i'm just going to jump straight in and start with uh, some of the questions so first question from Chum2000. Have you heard of greasing the groove and could such an approach to training be also good for running training? I haven't heard about it. I looked it up quickly now and it looks like it's basically being very consistent and constantly, you know, working consistently on the same movement pattern in order to stimulate the neurological uh, motor pathways. Uh, and I, yeah, I mean, that's true for running too. If you do a lot of strides or, uh, or, or fast paced running, you will stimulate some of those faster uh, uh, motor uh, neurons. Uh, and, but also mileage, just in general, running more will make you more efficient as a runner uh, neurologically. So you become better at uh, recruiting the muscle fibers and and uh, moving in, a, in an econo economical way. I don't know if that's relevant because I haven't really heard about that term, but yeah. Uh, next question, A Cummins. Is there any aspects to reaching one's running potential, included, including 100 meters to the marathon, etc., that is better supported by diets other than a fruit-based diet? Well, I'm of the opinion that a fruit-based diet uh, is optimal for our health because it's our natural species-specific diet. So I'm inclined to think that it's good for everything. However, you know, first thing that came to mind when you asked that question is that if you're doing a 100-meter sprint, if you're a sprinter, basically, you, you're actually not relying on the aerobic system and you're not relying on even the anaerobic system that much. You're re relying on the phosphocreatine system. That means you need to have a large store of creatine in your muscles in order to perform well. So if, if you're at the high end of sprinting performance, you, you probably need to supplement your diet with creatine. I, I think that would be a performance enhancing supplement to include in your diet if you are a sprinter. That's not so important if you're a marathon runner though. And uh, for marathon runners, definitely a high carbohydrate, plant-based diet is, is really optimal to stock glycogen. Uh, but of course you do need a lot of protein as well, ideally. And fruit doesn't have as much of it. So I suggest supplementing with protein powder or eating legumes if you can tolerate uh, tolerate them. Both legumes and protein powder can be challenging though, digestion wise. But um, yeah. Sean Byrne asks, what changes have you noticed in your body composition, physical and mental health since you started running seriously? My body composition has changed. I mean, I, I have a little bit more muscle, especially in my legs, uh, obviously, compared to before. Uh, my fat percentage hasn't changed much. It goes up and down a little bit um, based on whether or not I'm trying to cut down or if I'm trying to or if I'm just not focusing on that. Uh, my mental health though definitely improved I would say. Uh, running allows me to process my thoughts uh, and just be with myself every day when I'm out running. It's a very nice way to stay balanced emotionally I find. Uh, physic my physical health definitely has improved uh, just because when you train, when you get fit, uh, all of the different functions that are good for life, they improve. So you, be you get better at everything, really. So I would say better health, better mental health and a little bit more muscle. Uh, 
Hey guys, so I'm uh, editing the Q&A video here and I, I just realized I should definitely tell you guys about the fact that I actually make Q&A videos every month over on the Lone Trail Patreon page. So just head over to patreon.com slash the Lone Trail. There's a link in the description. Um, yeah, if you want exclusive content, that's the place to go. All right, let's get back to the video. Saul Goodman, since when do you actually run? I mean, regularly as your hobby sports and how did you get into it? What was your motivation with running and, and doing some other sport? Well, I suggest you check out one of my old videos, how I got into running. I'll put a link to it here. Um, but basically, I've always run a little bit. My dad used to run or he still runs. And, um, but it's really, you know, three or four years ago that I started getting inspired about really starting to run a lot and I would say it's the last two years only since 2017 well two and a half years or so that I've been um, really focused and training systematically and training well I used to do Taekwondo uh, when I was a child and a teenager I have a black belt and so that's my that's my childhood closed home do you ever find that you have itches when you're running? I have moderate OCD and when I'm out running, I have to stop occasionally to itch, which can be annoying. Do you just ignore any itches until they pass? I haven't had any issues with itching when I run, uh, but I would bet that's pretty annoying. I think in general with itching, the, the, the key is to, to, to just ignore it and it usually goes away. The more you itch, usually the more it itches in my experience. So it's difficult to, to, to achieve though. Vegard Ur asks, what do you look for in a running shoe? Let's say you want three, four pairs, daily trainer, tempo interval, long run, easy pace, race day. Um, yeah, definitely, you definitely want different pairs and different shoes have different um, benefits, different pros and different cons. Uh, so for sure, when I'm looking at a training shoe, like you're just an easy mileage, long run type of shoe, uh, I actually really enjoy the Hoka Bondi, which is like super cushioned, um, but that's pretty heavy though. It's a heavy shoe. So yeah, I would, I would use that uh, if I'm going easy. So I would look for a lot of cushioning on an easy sort of uh, trainer. And then when I'm out doing a little bit of a harder session, I obviously want it to be pretty light. Uh, I have the Hoka uh, Carbon X, for example. That's super light. That's actually a shoe that I will use for races. I haven't used it in a race yet. I've uh, only done it on a few important workouts. Other than that, I have my Hoka Clifton, which is also pretty heavy, but not as heavy as the Bondi. So for me, that's a pretty good shoe for general, maybe tempo runs or a little bit faster paced stuff, but also for easy runs and long runs too, for that matter. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you look for in a running shoe? I like it to be pretty low drop, but I used to run with ultra shoes that are zero drop and I, I came to enjoy more Hoka shoes, just having like three to five milliliters, millimeters of uh, elevated heel. I actually find that to be, I, I like it more. Uh, maybe my Achilles or my uh, ankle mobility, I have limited ankle mobility. That sort of makes it easier for me a little bit to have a little bit of a heel. Um, but obviously, the lighter, the better, uh, comfortable. Comfort is probably the main thing, I would say. I, I, comfort is the main thing that I want to focus on. And, and after that, cushioning. I wouldn't want a shoe that has 10 millimeters of cushioning uh, or of, of elevated heel. That would be too much. Like uh, in terms of like heel to toe drop. Uh, I do like a lot of cushioning though. 10 millimeters is not much. Uh, next question. Um, lush lady, barefoot lady, <laughs> barefoot running. Do you do it? Do you recommend it? Much love. Um, I don't do it. I would like to do it. I think it is a good idea to do it. Um, it strengthens the foot but I would throw it in only as barefoot strides or perhaps a short, uh, some faster running on, on, the, on, the, on the track or on grass uh, once a week or twice a week just to strengthen the feet. 
and work on good form. Healthy Vegan Adventures asks, what places around the world do you recommend for trail running? Well, I haven't been everywhere, obviously, and I, I don't know. I mean, if you want to do crazy mountain running, La Palma is pretty good, but it's pretty extreme, though. Um, other than that, Norway, dude. Norway is the best place. Norway is amazing for trail running. So I would recommend Norway. Jacob Tip, how to recover from or prevent shin splints? Well, the main way to, to avoid shin splints is to not ramp up your mileage or intensity too quickly. Be careful when you're introducing new elements into your training. Build up slowly, have your volume build very slowly. Be conservative uh, and add in some foam rolling. I think foam rolling can be a good way to work on it. If you already have shin splints, you probably want to take a short break from training, a couple of weeks maybe, and then slowly build into it again. Mont Alban Jr., your post epic run routine protocol to start repairing your body and get it ready for the next run. Uh, okay, so I guess you're asking about what I do after a run. Um, first thing, I hydrate, come home. I Actually, at first I weigh myself to see how much water I lost to, uh, in sweat. Then I drink the water to replace uh, the water lost. And then I change my clothes and then I eat. And that's just about mainly getting in carbohydrates. Fruit is ideal. Fr bananas are optimal. Uh, I add some protein powder to it as well. Um, sometimes I take some supplements. And then it's about resting, just chilling out, sitting on the couch. If you had an important workout, you want to rest for the next few hours for sure, because that's when the actual ad adaptations are taking place in the next few hours and even the next few days. That's when your body is actually building that fitness. Um, Charles Ekendal, what are your short and long-term fitness goals? Have you ever played tennis or done martial arts? Yes, I have done martial arts. I have a black belt in Taekwondo, as I mentioned. I don't, haven't played tennis. Do you see running as being quite one-dimensional compared to other fitness activities or sports? Uh, tennis, you're moving more slow and fast, switch fibers, explosiveness, balance, agility. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I think so. Uh, Martial arts, for example, are really great because you're working on all those different aspects of fitness and uh, being well-rounded. Yes, running is pretty monotonous. You're working on a very, um, yeah, I don't know what the word would be. One-dimensional is a good, good description. Although we are runners, humans, I think. And so running for us is a good way to keep our body uh, fit the way it's supposed to be fit. So I, I, I think running needs to be a part of everyone's life, uh, lives, ideally. But yeah, if you want to be a well-rounded athlete and you want to be fit in a general sense, I would also add in some other things like tennis maybe and martial arts and, and things like that. Uh, what are my short and long-term fitness goals? That's a big question. Maybe I'll save that for another uh, video, I think so. Feel free to remind me if I forget. Saul Goodman again, how many Ks do you run a week? What is usually your longest distance? Um, I've built up to 100K per week. I did that last year, but then I've had a break now. And so now I'm building back up. Right now I'm like, this week is like 40K per week, 40 kilometers. And yeah, I'm building my way back up to 100K later this year. And I would like to obviously keep building it for years to come, but at the moment, 100K per week is the longest I've ever done. Um, what's my longest distance? The longest distance I've ever done is 31 kilometers. Um, not super long, but uh, t typically my long runs are between 20 and 30 kilometers. But I need to work on building that for the marathon. Dre, 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 Dre Place. How much protein do you generally consume per meal? And do you use protein powder? Yes, I use protein powder. And I use uh, how much per meal? Well, I typically aim for around 100 grams of protein per day. I weigh uh, currently 70 kilos. So I, yeah, I, I take about 50% uh, of my protein probably comes from protein powder. Um, and each meal then would be something like 20 to 30 
or even 40 grams of protein. Harry, Harry, what about black or blue toenails? Do you ever have that problem? I've tried all kinds of shoes, but none of them prevent destroying my toenails, only running in sandals. Yeah, that is a, an issue I think every runner deals with, especially if you're running downhill because your feet will be bu um, bumping against the shoe. The main thing here is to not wear too small shoes. You want, you know, you, you definitely want like half an inch, uh, like a centimeter or even more um, between your, the tip of your big toe and the tip of the shoe. Like you want to have a lot of space in front there. Uh, and and wearing shoes like Al Ultra is really great because they have a wide toe bunks. Um, Hoka shoes are okay. Other, some other shoes are really horrible in the sense that they're just too tight in the, sh in, the in the forefoot. Um, so that's that's a big thing wearing the right shoes. But yeah, even if you do, uh, you probably still have to endure some black toenails. I've seen a lot of runners actually just lose all their toenails. They don't even have toenails anymore. Uh, it's one of the um, problems of being a runner, I guess. That was actually all the questions on the long trail. Let's go over to the sweet natural living questions. So, Lolly B, how do you protect your joints long term with running, specifically knees? Uh, actually, joints are joint health turns out to be actually better, as I've heard anyway, I haven't looked into this, but I've heard that joint health is better in runners than in non-runners. Running is actually good for your joints because moving your joints means that you're getting uh, blood flow into your joint capsule and, well, not blood, but you're, you're moving the fluids so that you can move things in and out of the joints and, and that's good for joint health. So, but also it's important to have good running form and to not... Uh, uh, not ramp up your mileage too quickly and stuff like that. So uh, for me, it's going very well with uh, with my, my knees. No problems there. Sindre Eliasson asks, I have a more general question for you. Thoughts on psychedelics, cannabis? Well, that's sort of uh, on a different topic, I guess. But I would say, in general, I'm very curious about psychedelics. I'm positive to using them. I think it's a really good way to get insight into yourself and to life and stuff like that. But I'm also a bit scared, I guess, from of, of LSD and stuff like that. Uh, I have smoked a lot of cannabis in the past and I'm happy I've done that. But I recently smoked some cannabis again and I slept really poorly and I just didn't like it. So nowadays I don't use any cannabis, but I used to. Um, bu 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 bu. I'm sort of ignoring some of the comments, which are sort of totally about other things, but uh, so excuse me uh, if you're one of the people that asked the comment and you didn't get your comment answered. Um, Just Kingma, running question. When monitoring your running distance in kilometers per week, how to approach the distance of an individual long run? And somewhat irrelevant, back to in the fruitarian days, did you eat olives, olive oil? Uh, no, I didn't. But I think olive oil is pretty good, actually, as, as long as you keep the general fat intake pretty low. Like 10, max 15% of calories. Some people can possibly tolerate up to 20% of calories from fat, but I can't. Um, yeah, uh, the, in the long run, typically, could be something like 30% of your weekly mileage. So if you if you run say you run 50, uh, 60 kilometers per week, then your long run can be 20 kilometers. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. Charles Ekendal, yeah, he says I'm looking different. <laughs> I, I cut my hair, yes, I did. Vrai vegan gesund. Hey Mikkel, you're looking good. What about eating habits when you're training? How much do you eat before and after running? Are you training every day? How did you train on La Palma when it's hot? A lot of questions happy if you just answer one. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, my eating habits when I'm training are the same, just a lot of calories, basically three to 4,000 a day, probably usually. Uh, how much do you eat before and after running? Well, nothing special. I just eat breakfast. And then a few hours later, I go for a run and I come home and I eat a huge meal. Are you training every day? No, usually I, I have one rest day per week. How did you train on La Palma? I didn't train much. 
there. I had a break from training and working, but I did start running again a little bit when I was there at the end. Um, Josefine Christensen. Hey, so my question is quite similar to some of the others. How do you protect your joints, especially your ankles, when trying to run faster and further? I'm a beginner at running, and for the last three months I've been tracking my runs to see how I'm doing. I set a goal to have the average speed of 10 kilometers an hour in a 5 kilometer run, and that is accomplished. Great. Uh, now that I'm aiming at getting it to 11 kilometers per hour, I've been training for that for three weeks now. I'm having a lot of problems and pains in my ankles, uh, kind of like shin splints, I try to avoid it, etc. Also, do you have any advice for when you are starting to train for longer runs, half marathons and marathons? Something you should, something you must do and something you should definitely not do. Well, you say you've been training for that, uh, increasing your pace basically for three weeks now uh, and, and you have some pain. Well, three weeks is, is nothing. Okay, so when you start increasing your training in some way, increasing the pace, increasing the mileage, increasing anything, doing any change, uh, you want to give it a, quite a few weeks uh, of adaptation. So three weeks is very little. And so if you, if you suddenly just jump up to a much faster pace than you're used to, that can give you pain in the ankles and, and other places too. So that's usually the, the, the solution. When, when you have pain, it's usually too much, too quickly, too fast, too much. It's just generally just too much, too fast. Uh, the way to do it would then to be to back off a little bit. And instead of spending three weeks of adapting to that faster pace, um, actually spend like six or 12 weeks adapting to it. And you don't want to just like jump up. You, you can jump up, but then you have to jump back again, maybe the next week jump back up, then back down, maybe two weeks uh, intense training and then one easy week. There's a lot of ways to do it, but you gotta be careful and conservative. That's the main thing. Um, and I wouldn't really necessarily focus at, on, you know, a particular speed, like getting from 10 kilometers an hour to 11 kilometers an hour. Um, I would allow, I would just focus on good training and then the speed will come naturally. You don't necessarily have to try to run faster. You will just naturally run faster as you start training more. So increasing your volume of easy running actually can be very powerful. You don't have to run fast to run fast, strangely enough. You need to do a little bit of fast running to run fast, but most of your ability is coming from your aerobic system, which is developed by time. So if you can just run more hours per week, uh, and you can do it easy, easy intensity, careful, because that's much easier on your joints and your legs, uh, and you build up that volume a little bit, that will actually give you more bang for your buck usually. Um, and the last question about something you must do and something you definitely shouldn't do for half marathons or marathons, that's a good topic for maybe another video. I'll, I'll try and remember that. Thanks for your question and, and good luck with your um, um, Training and of course anyone watching, if you, if you uh, including you, um, Josefina, if you have any questions or if you want coaching or anything, you can always contact me at my website, MGJ Coaching. Um, there's a link in the description. Lucifer, what training is best in order to lower the pace but still don't mess up the breathing flow? Um, not sure I understand that question entirely, um, but yeah, I don't understand. John Quibble, how do you protect your joints and how to avoid getting blisters? Well, I, we've talked about the joints a few times now. Um, in terms of uh, avoiding blisters, uh, you just have to get calluses. You just, you, you will get some blisters basically. But uh, wearing in gingy socks, toe socks, I think there's an affiliate link in the description. Uh, those are pretty good at uh, preventing blisters. DJ121, what are your fastest times in all the distances you have raced? Can you run the 10k under 29 minutes or the marathon under 220? No, I cannot do that. If I did that, I would be a sub-elite athlete already. I would love to do it though. Can I ever get to the point where I run a sub-30 minute 10k? and a sub-220 marathon? 
perhaps that would be the dream. That would be my dream. My, I haven't actually trained for more than a couple of years systematically. So my fastest times are not really super awesome. My half marathon PR is 133 and my, um, yeah, that's the only PR that actually reflected a good race for me. All the other races, I wasn't really well prepared. I would say in August last year, I was probably in sub 40 minute 10K shape and, and sub uh, 90 minute uh, half marathon shape and possibly, just possibly sub three hour marathon shape, but I didn't get to race the marathon. So we'll see what 2020 can, can bring. Ben, the wet opinions on eating animal products. That's not really a running specific question. Um, I mean, I'm obviously not a fan of animal products. I, I, I think a plant-based, whole food plant-based diet is the best, especially a fruit focused diet. And that's why I recommend what I do. Healthy Vegan Adventure asks, is it better to carry water and supplies in a running vest or a running waist, waist belt? Um, I prefer the, the, the belt. Um, I just feel trapped in a vest. But uh, if you have a lot of stuff to carry, the, the vest is obviously better. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Joe Owens, Talking Sense. Excellent channel. Can you help me? Before I go for a run in the morning, after 12 hours of fasting, I've been eating about 10 dates, two hours or so before, but I find I get very thirsty not long after. Could this be high blood sugar? That's very difficult to answer. I, I would need much more information about a lot of things in order to answer that question. But uh, perhaps you could just try drinking more water with the dates. Um, yeah, I don't know. And that's it. That is it actually. Great questions, guys. Uh, long video. Uh, if you made it all the way this to the end of this video, then please give me a subscribe. Uh, I would love to have you with me here on the channel. Check out some of the links in the description. I post on Instagram sometimes. I post on Strava almost every day. That's my training log. I um, yeah. So stay stay tuned and stay uh, subscribed and. Uh, and yeah, and as I said, if you have any qu more questions, like if you have any particular questions relating to you and you want some advice, maybe you could always send me a message. You could go on the Facebook page for the Lone Trail, send me a message there. You could contact me at my website. There's a link in the description, MGJ Coaching. We can set up a coaching consultation if you want to talk about your training and, and all that. So. I appreciate all your questions. That was really fun answering. Uh, we actually answered all the questions. So I, 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 yeah, it's a long video, but thanks. Hope you're having a good day. I hope your running is going well and I'll see you around. Bye.